Hey guys, so today I'm going to be doing a slightly different video. I'm going to be doing a video that's kind of personal. It's about anxiety and panic attacks. A lot of people have anxiety attacks and panic attacks and general anxiety and social anxiety these days. I've had anxiety since I was in year 7 and my first panic attack was when I was in year 8 I believe. So I've had anxiety for about five years now and my first panic attack was about four years ago. Um, I'm 17 so I was about 11, 12 when my anxiety started because I was in year seven at secondary school when it all started. I can't really like remember my first panic attack but I remember it being in year eight. I also had a panic attack in year nine because halfway through year nine I moved to a different school and after being there for about four months I had a panic attack um I remember this one I was in English and we had to plan out like by by this lesson we'd had to have plan out, planned out our speaking and listening and it got to my turn to do the speaking and listening and we had to stand up in front of the whole class and do it and because of having anxiety and having panic attacks and all that I ended up having like a proper panic attack and I got I started crying and I got tense like I tensed up I got hot I needed I needed space I was just like shitting myself and I literally had a full out like proper panic attack like I've always been a shy and socially awkward kind of person but I started having anxiety when I was in year seven like for certain like that's when I felt something was wrong uh, all the way up to the end of primary school like I loved primary school like that was my favorite time but it was just when like secondary school started I've always hated school since I started secondary school since day one <laughs> obviously different people with anxiety can have different anxiety experiences may have different panic attack experiences but um and people may get anxious or may get a panic attack in a situation that someone else wouldn't. So I got up like Google's version of panic attacks and this is the example that they gave me. Um, it's a sudden overwhelming feeling of acute and disabling anxiety. Quote, she has suffered from panic attacks since her early twenties. I luckily don't have panic attacks very often and I don't get too anxious very often um, which is good but I have had it quite badly a few times like a bunch of times when I get anxious or have a panic attack it's usually when I have to socialize or I have to like meet new people or mix in with new people that I haven't met before or people that I don't like um, and when I have to go into like new situations and or like do new things that I haven't done before like schools and jobs are like really hard for me like getting a new job and moving school was really hard also like speaking in front of a crowd like when you have to do like speaking and listening at school and stuff like that that's really hard for me I've also known people from school who've had anxiety and panic attacks um, from both of the secondary schools that I went to and my mum also has social anxiety. Um, my mum was really shy when she was younger. My mum's always been like a tough person so my mum being a tough person that's kind of why I'm a tough person. Um, I know it's like really weird for me to say that but like me and my parents like my parents are like really tough people and which has made me a really tough person even though I have anxiety which <laughs> may sound really weird to you guys but I've only developed anxiety since starting secondary school. My last proper anxiety attack was when I was in year 11. It was the, it was the first day of year 11. Um, like we just got back from summer holidays. Um, it was the 3rd of September 2015. I actually 
wrote down um, everything on my phone when I was having a panic attack. Um, and when I got home, I wrote it into my journal. And I will read it out to you guys. So this is my journal. It's a nice purple hardback journal that I got from Wilkinson's a little like a while ago. So this is it. And it goes onto this page and the top of this page. First day back at school today. First day of year 11. It's been shit so far already. School has already picked on me. Like what the fuck? I hate when school picks on me, especially over things that don't need to be picked on. I was anxious, nervous, worried, and felt sick about coming back to school. I felt agitated, nervous, worried, sick, anxious, and shaky this morning This morning on the bus, in assembly, and in tutor. We had two hour tutor today, which was boring and crap. I had to take a few minutes out because of how I was feeling. I went to the toilets upstairs. I cried my eyes out. I've had a lot on my mind at the moment as well. Family, mum, my ill granddad, missing my dad, sister's pregnancy, coming back to school didn't help and it was horrible coming back to school. School picked on me about my nose piercing and they picked on another girl in my year, in my tutor. And it's not even a big deal. And I could put tape over it or get a clear translucent stud, which won't be as bad or noticeable. I want school to end now. I wanted to... I wanted school to end ages ago to be honest. I don't want to go through year 11. My anxiety has been really bad today, partly because of school. I feel I can't cope with my anxiety when my anxiety kicks in. I just want to leave and run and go someplace where nobody knows me. Somewhere private too. Anxiety kills me. So that was what I wrote in my journal. When I get anxious or have a panic attack, um, it, I start to feel nervous. I get like a funny feeling in my stomach. I get pains, like aching pains. I get hot and irritated. I feel tense. I get emotional. I feel stressed out. I need space. I hyperventilate when I have a panic attack. My breathing becomes a bit unsteady. Um, I feel unsteady, I feel sick. I sometimes get bad thoughts. I have been forced into counselling. I didn't want to go to any of it. I got forced to go to CAMS, which is a counselling team near me. How I got forced into counselling was I went to the doctors with my mum, and I think we talked to the doctor about my anxiety. And I didn't like the doctor that we went to anyway. And she suggested CAMS, and I told her I didn't want to go, and I didn't want to do it, and I don't like counselling. I've just never liked counselling, like it's never been my thing, it's never been something I'll do or go to. But I basically got forced into it by the doctor and my mum really wanted me to go. So I went and it was a really shit session and I just didn't want to be there and I really wanted to go. And the counsellor could see that I wanted to go. Uh, um, I got forced to go to a second session as well, which I didn't want to go to but I had to. Like I did it for mum because no mum wanted me to go. But then after that... Um, my mum didn't make me go again, the doctor didn't make me go again, like I didn't go again. But I got forced by teachers to go and see the school counsellor, which I really didn't want to go to. But I kind of went to her just so I could get out of lesson, but like I just really didn't want to be there or go. Like I've never liked counselling, my boys like not wanting to do it or anything. And I also don't like opening up to people to be honest. Socially, looking for a job, moving to school making friends, meeting new people, like crowds of people. It's really hard for me. And the first two to three months um, of moving to my second secondary school and making friends was really hard for me. And it took me like two to three ish months to actually somewhat start to make, like actually make friends properly. It's like to deal with it personally, I just take myself into like a quiet area, somewhere where I can be on my own. I try and take deep breaths. I try, be, I try to be positive, but it's really hard to be positive. Um, I write it down like on my phone or on a bit of paper. Usually on my phone if I did want to write it down. I cry a little bit as well. Like I tear up and I cry a bit if I want to or need to. And I talk to myself about it if I feel like I want to talk. But I know my mum's always there if I'm anxious or having a panic attack. So I can talk to my mum about it as well. I'm going to give you guys some ideas on how to deal with it. And 
I hope it kind of helps. <laughs> so take deep breaths. Um, so yeah, just try and take deep breaths. Uh, write it down on like your phone or on a bit of paper or in a journal. Go to a quiet area and just take some time out and just take some peace to yourself and just go and like chill out, try and like chill out in a quiet area where it's just you or where there's like hardly anyone around. Uh, talk to yourself if you want to talk to yourself about it. I do that sometimes. Or you can talk to someone else like boyfriend, girlfriend, friend, family, parents, brother, sister, anyone, uncle, auntie. Um, if you want, you could like turn your camera on, like on your phone or like a normal camera and like talk to the camera about it. Like you don't have to post it anywhere if you don't want to, but if you do want to post it somewhere you can. You could create like a Facebook group or a group on Instagram or a Snapchat group for you and your friends who suffer with anxiety or you could look up anxiety groups or anxiety and depression groups on Facebook and join them so you and whoever else suffers with anxiety can talk to each other about it. There is anxiety apps that you can download and I will insert some screenshots or like screen recordings of them at the end of this video and I will write them in the description for you guys. You could create a blog and write blog posts about your anxiety and panic attacks. Um, now we're gonna go through anxiety and panic attack symptoms just so you guys like have an idea of what anxiety and panic attack symptoms are if you didn't know already. So pounding heartbeat, feeling of your heart being squeezed or pressured, chest pains like sharp like often sharp chest pains intense sweating possible hot or cold sensations lightheadedness possibly with confusion shortness of breath weak like feeling weak um, tingling or numbness in your arms or legs uh, the feeling of dizziness or feeling faint burning sensation through your skin and muscles Intense feeling of doom as though something bad is going to happen to you or terrible is going to happen to you. Trouble concentrating or focusing. Impulse feeling like you need to get away. Trouble listening or hearing. Overwhelming fear, which is a level of anxiety that can convince you of something terrible. Depersonal Depersonalisation, also known as the feeling as though you're watching yourself. Nausea and stomach discomfort, head pressure, like your head's being squeezed or pressured, palpitations, trembling or shaking, or feeling unsteady. So that's basically my sort of story um, and experience. Um, and that I just wanted to like have a little little bit of a chat to you guys about my story and tell you guys roughly how I feel. So I wanted to show you guys the symptoms and ideas of how to deal with it and some of those symptoms that I've mentioned I get and the ways of dealing with it that I've mentioned I have tried and I am thinking of trying out some anxiety apps as well and if I do try out any anxiety if I do try out any anxiety apps I will do like a review video about it um, and I will let you guys know how they work out. Um, but I have looked up um, some anxiety apps on the app store on my phone. So I hope you guys found this video somewhat helpful um, or maybe interesting. Um, so that's everything for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed. Comment, rate and subscribe and I'll see you guys soon for another video. Bye!